All right, welcome everybody to Webinar Wednesday. I am Carly Endries. I'm the Outreach Coordinator for the North Dakota Brain Injury Network. We offer these um, free webinars every other Wednesday um, at this exact time, 1.30 to 3. Um, you can also view them later if you're not viewing it live. We do archive them, or if you want to go back later and watch again if you missed something. Um, they are on our website, um, ndbin.org slash webinars. Um, and you can also make your CEU request there tomorrow. By the end of the day, the recording and the CEU, re CEU request will be there. But um, I'm very excited to introduce Craig to all of you. He has spoken to us before, and I love what he has to say. So I asked him to come back and kind of talk more about neuroplasticity with us today. So. Craig is in North Carolina, so he is nice and warm as we are all free. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but thank you for joining us, Craig. I'll let you take it away. You are very welcome. And thank you, Carly. And thank you so much for everyone that, come, that came today. I really appreciate you being here. And hopefully the information that I share, you can be able to then convey it to the folks that you work with. You know, a brain injury or any kind of recovery really is a lifelong process. And in my experience, it's very important to involve the body, soul, spirit, mind, and emotions in the process, because if we don't, then I think that the recovery process can be lacking. So if, you, if we involve the whole person, that empowers them uh, to, to develop in ways maybe that they didn't realize that they, they could develop in. So what I've done is I have uh, written an article. I sent a link to Carly on this. and. Um, what I have here on the share screen. Can you all see my uh, share screen? Um, this is the article that I sent to uh, Carly, and I'll just hide these. Hide these. Uh... Floating controls. So uh, this is the article that I sent um, to Carly. And in the article, I have a link to this presentation so that if I, I'm going to go through information kind of quickly, but you're always welcome to come back to this, uh, this uh, article here. Ask Carly for the link, or if you email me at secondchancetolive1 at yahoo.com, I can send the link to you in the article. And I also want to point your attention to my resources. I have a lot of different resources. And if in the event that you're interested, you can read my bio, which is a short uh, two-page bio. And I also wanted to draw your attention to, I, I have uh, put together six different presentations. My first presentation was Finding Purpose After Brain Injury and, uh, and Stroke. This is my, uh, my second um, presentation is uh, uh, Acceptance and Creating Our New Normal After Brain Injury and Stroke. And this is my third, which is neuroplasticity, setting goals, and creating hope after brain injury, and then believing in ourselves through self-advocacy, a guide to owning our power after brain injury and stroke. And then there's 12 ways, and my fifth presentation that I've created is 12 ways to enhance our lives, well-beings, and relationships after brain injury. And then the sixth presentation is making our lives magical one, uh, one day at a time, which is basically a summation of my six presentations. So I'm available to give these presentations uh, at your, your, um, your, your webinar at the hospital settings. Um, I'm going to be in McGee Rehabilitation Hospital next week, and I've been in uh, Cleveland Clinic and, and with Encompass Rehabilitation and in different other medical places, as well as uh, different groups and clubhouses and so forth. So, you know, share my availability with the folks out there on the uh, planes, per se, figuratively speaking, that community. So what I'm going to do is I, I believe that we all learn, uh, you know, in different ways. Some of us learn through watching, some of us learn through listening, and some of us learn through doing, or, you know, auditory visual auditory or kinesthetic so what i've done is i put together this um it's a powerpoint presentation but i put to make created a, a pdf of the presentation just it's easier for me to scroll through this way and um let me just back up and share my injury happened when i was 10 years old in 1967 when i was uh, about 10 years old 
Uh, I'll be 65 in, in May. So it's been 54 and a half years since I lived with a brain injury. I had a right frontal lobe damage, coupe contra coop, and a, a severe brain bruise with brain stem involvement. I remained in a coma for three weeks. And I, um, you know, I was told, uh, I went through a battery. I had to teach myself how to walk, talk, read, write, and speak, speak in complete sentences. My family was told that I probably never make it beyond high school academically after a series of EEGs and cognitive and psychosocial testing, but they never disclosed that to me. So through, um, you know, I went through, I graduated on time with my high school class and went on to um, obtain both my undergraduate degree, which took me 10 years and with four different majors and uh, two universities and one community college. And then with, I got my master's degree with two graduate schools and um, so it, I just had a lot of disappointments along the way and I uh, was applied for disability twice in Florida was denied because I was making uh, more money than or whatever the reason was I was denied and then uh, I um, I got I, while I was working as a voc rehab counselor in uh, in Florida uh, I was having difficulties, so they encouraged, they made me to be a client while I was still working as a counselor. And uh, because I, I had a difficult time writing individualized written rehabilitation plans, as well as some other difficulties, they terminated me after my probation. And I maintained and continued as a, um, as a, a client. However, because of a poor job placement, they terminated me as a client. So. Uh, I got fired from several more jobs there in Florida, and then I moved. Uh, I sent up resumes because I heard North Carolina was rehab friendly for CRCs. I was a certified rehab counselor at the time. So what happened was that I sent up my resumes and uh, cover letters were recruited up to do workers comp. Four months later, I got fired from that job. And um, so I reapplied for uh, disability uh, SSDI, and I went through voc rehab for the second time there in, um, here in Charlotte. And when I, after going through the evaluation process, my, uh, my uh, voc rehab counselor told me that I was unemployable. So, you know, I, I spent a long time uh, trying to get, you know, find my place in life, but I kept on running into walls. So on uh, February 6, 2007, seven years after I was declared disabled and I was no longer employable, I created Second Chance to Live uh, after writing poems, an autobiography, a book that I got uh, registered with the Library of Congress but couldn't get published. And then a friend encouraged me to start Second Chance to Live, which I did on February 6, 2007. So, um, and I began writing articles. I began doing video presentations, slideshow presentations, creating um, creating posters, and different things, all with a perspective of a holistic approach to recovery: body, soul, spirit, mind, and emotions. Um, I've been training in different martial arts disciplines for the last uh, 26 years. My sensei, Seagong's original instructor, was Bruce Lee. And his philosophy was research your own experience, absorb what is useful, reject what is useless, and add specifically your own creation. So as we go along this presentation, I'm going to be sharing a little bit from that perspective, as well as that's how I've, basically my own brain recovery process has been a journey and a process. And it's, there's no silver bullets or magic potions. It just takes what it takes. And it's just a lot of, like from that movie, The Karate Kid, a lot of wax on, wax off. So, you know, if you feel like you're discouraged because you're waxing on and waxing off or not working, don't give up, you know, keep on going. So we'll start this presentation now. It's um, neuroplasticity, setting goals, and uh, creating hope after brain injury and stroke. And, you know, after we have, before we have a brain injury, I use the analogy of being on a railroad. In, in life, we're traveling down this railroad of life. Everything seems peachy keen. The uh, surroundings look good. And then we come up against this thing called brain injury. So I like an, a brain injury as a switch on the railroad of life that points us off into a different direction that we normally would not have gone. And what I've learned through my journey and my process is that that's not the end of the road. The, the uh, switch is just a way to show, show me 
how my life can be different in a brand new special and magical way as I learn how to use my gifts, talents, and abilities and work ways that work for me. And that's what I've essentially done through Second Chance to Live. You know, it's been a way for me to share my experience, strength, and hope with people who have been living with brain injuries. And because it's an invisible disability, many times once our external wounds healed, we're considered to be normal. And that can be mystifying for both caregivers, professionals, and individuals living with brain injuries. So what I do is I, I, uh, I just encourage people to realize that the brain injury is merely an event. It's not a definition of who we are. It doesn't have to define who we are, and it shouldn't define who we are. But instead, we get just to learn how to, as in my second presentation, acceptance and creating our new normal after brain injury. So my encouragement to you and to people listening here today and those listening in the archives is not to give up, to keep looking for different ways that will work for you. And I would encourage you and invite you to look at my other presentations that I have in the article that I showed you previously. And I'm more than will, 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 willing to come and share those presentations with your hospital staff uh, as an in-service um, in uh, your uh, group homes and any other capacity that you would like other uh, associations around the country. So reach out to your peeps, you know, around the country and let them know that I'm available. So so once we have our brain injury and, the, you know, the switch has been tripped and we travel down this different track, what's once uh, seems familiar now becomes unfamiliar. As a result, we can feel discouraged. And as a result, we can start feel, uh, focusing on symptoms and not on solutions. As a result, we can lose, our, lose hopes and our dreams may be seen to fade away. Like how can we do that now that we can't do it? We can't figure it out. You know, I felt like someone in a dark room with a, a light switch that I couldn't find. And I kept on bumping into furniture and running into walls and so forth till I, you know, I found my, you know, found a switch. And that took a lot of different trial and error, which I talk about in my finding purpose after brain injury. Uh, and stroke presentation that you guys are welcome to go back and click on uh, after I get done with this presentation or at some time in the future and, and look at that and uh, then you'll understand what I'm talking about more uh, more specifically. So what happens with the brain uh, when the brain is damaged there's a nerve conduction issue because nerve cells are either damaged or they die, but there's healthy cells around the nerves, the damaged cells. So what you have here is we have a nerve cell. We have dendrite, we have an axon, axonal sheet with uh, myelin sheets that help the messages trans, trans uh, and go by quicker uh, on the axon to the axonal terminals. And from the axonal terminals, they jump and send messages back to another dendrite next to us. And what happens is I believe, you know, we have a right and left hemisphere. And the right and left hemisphere are connected by the corpus callosum, which is a bundle of nerve cells between the right and left hemisphere. And I believe that that's how the right and left hemisphere communicates. And what we get to learn how to do is through repetitive mirror movements, we get to learn how to train our damaged side with our non-damaged side, our affected with non-affected side. So, so as I shared, um, and, and then it helps to restore the connections. So what happened was that my right side was damaged in the accident. I had right frontal lobe damage. It was like a shallow depressed bowl when I woke up. And I, I thought I was in a nightmare, but it, it was reality. And I was in traction to settle my left femur, which was also fractured in the accident, which I was in traction for um, six to seven weeks and then placed in a full body cast. So, um, uh, and I talk more about that in my other presentation, but essentially after I got out of my, they took me out of the cast, I had to talk, learn how to walk again. And that was a process which I uh, would we'll, we'll go into, but for sake of time, I'm just gonna not uh, focus on that, that part of those uh, presentations. But suffice to say that I, I had to learn how to walk, talk, read, write, speak complete sentences again after my brain injury. So the damage to the left side of our body affects the right side of our body and the right side of our body that's damaged affects the left side of our body as I've understood it way back in the day. 
So the unaffected side of our body can help restore the affected side of our body, I believe through repetitive mirror movements. So as I said, my right side, my right, my brain was damaged on the right side. Your brain may be, it may have been damaged on the left side. So your if your brain is affected or damaged on the right side, your left side of the body will be affected. And if the left side of your brain has been affected, the right side of your brain will, uh, body will have been affected. The good thing and good news to realize is that uh, um, accepting the limitations of my brain injury, I do not have to be stopped by them. Accepting my limitations, the limitations of my brain injury doesn't mean that I like it, like that I have those limitations. Accepting those limitations just means that I can, uh, I, I uh, like, I, I'm sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. Accepting them just means that I do not have to be stopped by them. And then accepting my limitations gives me the ability to try different approaches. And then accepting my limitations gives me the ability to find a way that will work for me. And that's a good thing to know, to realize that I do not have to give up. If I give up, it's only my fault, you know? So it's really important not to give up. So. And then um, what I'm going to do is just so I can read this. Okay. So I am free to search for a way or ways that work for me. I am free to move beyond what I am led to believe about myself. And that's what a diagnosis does. It, teach, it tries to convince me that I am my brain injury. So, and I'm also free to move beyond what I'm told that I can accomplish or the prognosis. So what I do is I really encourage people to not pay attention to the diagnosis or the prognosis and not let those things weigh us down and keep us and prevent us from moving forward with our life. So I'm free to stop judging my efforts too. You know, I grew up as a perfectionist. My dad was a perfectionist and perfectionism was an issue that I dealt with in my life. And, and uh, through my own recovery process, thank God I was able to kind of let go of that for the most part. So what I'm able to do is, is try, try something different, you know, which I've done through my, throughout my life uh, in my recovery process. Now, the definition of neuroplasticity, you may have, um, heard of this, but it's the ability for the brain to create new neural pathways and brain reorganization through repetitive mirror movements. So as I train one side of my brain and I repeat the same process on the other side of the brain, I'm training the brain and the body to, uh, 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 to work independently, but together doing the same thing. So it's really important to realize and remember this concept, you know, the repetitive mirror movements. So what's important and what I need to, you know, my encouragement to you as I need to remember is to set a goal. It doesn't have to be a big goal. It can be a little goal. But as we work on the little goal, the, you know, the journey of a thousand miles begins with the first step. And once we start walking before long, we'll be able to look back and see how far we come. And we're able to celebrate all those small successes, which is great to know. So um, my encouragement as I've had to do in my life is I've had to work on skills and skill sets. One of my uh, deficits is that I have a difficulty learning sequences of information. So what I have to do things is I have to do things over and over and over again, repetition. And what I've found for myself is I've had to learn one skill at a time and do that skill a bazillion times and then add an, and learn another skill and do that a bazillion times and then combine both skills into a skill set. And the skill sets then can be combined with other skill sets and kind together as I combine one skill set after one another skill set with another skill set, I'm able to accomplish things that I've never dreamed possible. And I'm in the process, I'm able to improve the quality of my life and you're, you'll be able to improve the quality of your life. So I'm able to move beyond the diagnosis about what somebody may be telling me I can't, uh, who I am, because I'm not my brain injury, I'm not a stereotype, I'm not a label, I'm not a stigmatization. So if anybody's trying to put that on you and tell you that you're one of those things or you're bought into the notion that you're a diagnosis or you are limited 
you're limited because somebody tells me that tells you that you're limited, don't believe them. Just keep trying to find a way that will work for you. It may not work for them, but it can work for you. As I found uh, things that I do may not work for other people, but they've learned I've learned how to use them in ways that work for me. So then we can move beyond the prognosis. We can find a way that will work for us. And, and as a result, we'll enhance our lives and the lives of our uh, relationships and the well-beings of individuals in our lives. Um, so, so as I talked about here, living beyond limitations and one skill and one skill set at a time. So, so I'm able to move beyond the confines of a prognosis. I'm able to find a way that works for me, and I'm able to build a new life. Excuse me. It's dry here. So I'm able to do that through tenacity, persistence, and not giving up. Okay, so I exercise to learn and relearn skills, one skill and one skill set at the time, as I mentioned. So that, and that's done through repetitive mirror movements. By engaging both sides of my brain, I communicate with both sides of my brain and my body. So as you set a goal, don't be discouraged. Just start slowly, but don't give up. And learn one skill and one skill set at a time. So... You know, the process just takes time. Like I said earlier, you know, the journey of a thousand miles begins with the first step, you know, and that, but if we focus on one step at a time, we can be discouraged. But if we keep moving before long, we'll be able to look back and see how far we have come. So set that goal, don't be discouraged. And remember this, this riddle, the riddle is how do you eat an elephant? And the answer to that is one bite at a time. So in our lives, we may see this elephant like this one on the left that seems so large and huge and how in the world could I get rid of that, you know, defeat that. But if we realize that if I just take one bite at a time and I keep chewing, I'll be able to achieve what I never dreamed possible. And that's all done by small successes. So be encouraged, my friend, your efforts really make a difference in your life. So don't let the small things stand in your way. Now, I like the illustration of the fable of the tortoise and the hare. I don't know if anybody has heard that, uh, that um, fable, but I use it and I explain it in a different way. You know, the uh, tortoise challenged this, uh, this hare to a race and they started out after the, the uh, animals of the forest, they set a course and they, the hare started off and the tortoise started it off. And then the hare kept plugging along, but the, uh, I mean, the tortoise kept plugging along, but the hare ran ahead and he played in the field and he took a nap, but the, uh, the tortoise kept going forward. And then finally what happened is that the uh, hare realized that he had been sleeping too long and ran to the ran to the, um, the finish line where the hare was there waiting for him. And at the bottom of the, um, the bottom of the fable, the, the line is slow and steady wins the race. And I like this fable because it's an illustration. You know, there may be hares in our life that want to discourage us from running our race, telling us we cannot win our race. Why should you even try? And we may have those messages too. We may be telling us those messages. But the reality is, is that if we keep plugging along slow and steady, you know, then we're going to win our race. I like uh, several several quotes um, that I'll, sh I'll share. This one quote by um, several quotes by Albert Einstein. The first quote is: "Everybody is a genius, but if you judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree, it will live its whole life believing that it is stupid." So again, if everyone is a genius, but if you judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree, it will live its whole life believing that it is stupid. So not everybody's, it, I was never meant to climb a tree, the tree of a, of a traditional employment. And you may not be able to climb the tree of traditional employment. I'm not able to work in a volunteer setting just because of the way that it works out for me. I have difficulty reading nuances and, and nonverbal cues at times in real time. But I do well what I do behind you know, my computer and, and through speaking on uh, you know, on uh, 
Zoom here. I've uh, last uh, in the past 20 months, I spoke to 58 different places around the country, and I have 11 more places that I'm scheduled to speak around the country. So, um, you know, I'm able to give in ways that work for me. So, and, and another quote that I like by Albert Einstein is that it's not that I'm so smart, it's just that I stay with problems longer. Again, it's not that I'm so smart. It's just that I stay with problems longer. And another quote that I like that I talk about in another presentation, it says, and this is by Henry David Thoreau. He says, if you advance confidently in the direction of your dreams and endeavor to live the life that you imagine, you will meet with a success unexpected in common hours. Again, if you advance confidently in the direction of your dreams and endeavor to live the life that you have imagined, you will meet with a success unexpected in common hours. So don't give up. Keep searching for a way that will work for us. And, it, you know, it's really, really important to run our own race and not judge our effort. I like a quote by Zig Ziglar. He says that regardless of your lot in life, you can build something beautiful on it. Again, regardless of your lot in life, you can build something beautiful on it. So my encouragement to you is I need to remember is slow and steady wins the race. And run your own race and stay on your own lot. Don't compare your efforts with those of the efforts. And there, uh, you know, a little known secret is that there's, there are weeds growing on the other side of the fence in your neighbor's yard. So don't give up. Just keep doing what you're doing and building the way that you're building. And what's really important for me to remember is to have fun with the process in building in ways that work for me. Have fun with the process. What you enjoy doing, you will stick with through times of discouragement. Although progress may seem slow at times, don't give up. You are making more progress than you realize. And here's a couple of quotes that I already mentioned. The journey of a thousand miles begins with the first step. And then once we start by Leah Chatsu, and then a quote that I wrote, once we start walking before long, we will be uh, we'll be able to look back and see how far we've come because we did not give up. And another quote that I like is by uh, Zig Ziglar. He says that sometimes adversity is what we need in order to become successful. Again, sometimes adversity is what we need in order to become successful. You know, so don't be discouraged by um, adversity because it really is making you stronger. And I use the illustration of the, the butterfly. You know, the caterpillar goes into the cocoon. In the cocoon, it struggles to get out. And in the process, it's, it turns into a butterfly. And in the process of its struggle, its wings become stronger and it's able to fly and fulfill its purpose. If somebody was to come along and try to help the butterfly out of the cocoon, even though that might seem like a compassionate thing to do for the butterfly, what it'll do is it will it will uh, uh, have the butterfly uh, not have its wings shrunk, uh, strengthened. So what will happen is it will flop, uh, fall to the ground and die or be eaten. So, you know, I like the concept of struggle to strength. We, we, are, are, we gain strength by struggling. So, yeah, and it's a process, you know, and it's a journey, it's not a destination. And so having a life goal, you know, and working on uh, activities of daily living can be a, you know, a little time in the process working, say, say with an occupational therapist, you know, working on little things, but realize that little things turn into big things, you know. I like another saying, inch by inch, life's a sense, but yard, yard by yard, it's very hard. Again, inch by inch, life's a cinch, yard by yard, it's very hard. When I first started training at the martial arts school, you know, I had a conversation with my sensei, my martial arts instructor, and what he did is he said, what I do is I give you ingredients. And what your job is to do is to combine those ingredients together and in the process become a black belt. So I worked diligently on trying to do that with my life. And uh, so it's been a journey and a process and I keep adding to and taking away and realizing what works and what doesn't work for me and, and celebrating the small successes and what I'm able to achieve. So again, it's one skill or one skill set at a time. 
And I do that by, I keep chewing. I keep taking another bite of the elephant. And I encourage you to keep taking a bite of your elephant, whatever that elephant might be for you. You know, working on your speech and language or working on your, uh, your, your mobility issues or concerns or working on whatever, your ability to be more independent. Uh, however that might work out, look for you. Just keep on working, keep chewing and keep, and don't give up. So in 1997, I started using different martial art disciplines. Okay, my primary uh, martial art is Muay Thai, which is Thailand's national sport. It uses elbows, knees, hands, and feet. So it's called the art of eight limbs. And it really was a very good thing that I started the training this because what it did unknowingly to me at the time was I was using neuroplasticity by incorporating, you know, my elbows, my knees, my hands, you know, my feet kicks and just doing different things. So over time, it's just re really helped. Then I, then at the martial arts school, then I learned, uh, I developed Western boxing skills and Filipino stick fighting skills and Kali and Jeet Kune Do skills and Wing Chun drills and uh, other drills and skills that I've learned how to do uh, replicate on both sides of my body. So what it is, is that I, by doing this, I've used both large and small muscle groups. Okay, and I've used a gross and fine motor skills. So what I do is that in the next series, I'm gonna be showing you uh, three different um, uh, short uh, demonstrations. And what I do in these is I, I'm using the, uh, in the first video presentation, I use long sticks, I use shorter sticks, I use shorter sticks, and then I use putty knives. And then I use open hand skills. And each one of these skills are used to develop gross and fine motor skills as I go shorter in the sticks and the, the um, putty knives. It's just a way to use my brain in a different way. So, and then these skills that I develop here, then I, in the second video, I uh, demonstrate transitions. And then in the third video demonstration, I then you use more precision drills. So it's just, again, it's just focusing, it's just moving down, it's just using the, the, the large muscle groups to the small muscle groups, to the gross motor skills, to the fine motor skills. In the first video presentation, I'm on the top of the Y at, here in Charlotte. In the background is the city of Charlotte, if you're interested. And this was, uh, I uh, created this with the help of one of the uh, staff there at the Y uh through using my phone so here's the first uh the first video presentation and then the short shorter sticks Just doing more fine, I'm fine tuning things as I go down in the in the sides of the sticks, and these are little what some would call fire sticks. And then here are the putty knives, and I do horizontal and inverted strikes. These are knife strikes, as if I was being in knife fighting or I was defending myself with knives. And again, I'm not trying to kick somebody out of, off, off of their hill or keep mine. I'm just training for the sake of having the skills and training my brain. And then these are uh, gross, gross using Western boxing. The elbows. Muay Thai elbows and knees, elbows, knees. And then these are Wing Chun centerline strikes, training my brain in a different way. Western boxing, using transitions in my legs. So I'm incorporating every, every part of um, my, um, my body.
then the, the second presentation, as I said, is more transitions. Uh, you're good. And this is downstairs in the Y where I work at. So whatever I'm doing on one side, I do on the other side, because I'm just repeating the same thing over and again. Again, it's wax on, wax off. Same thing with these sticks. And then I enter into, and it's a transition where I'm going from one. And I do this for training for multiple, multiple, multiple attackers, as well as just being able to train. Sorry for the clanginess. And then the more of a, the small sticks, same thing with the precision. If you notice on these, this is a weightlifting rack. On here, there are numbers. And what I do is I train by focusing on the particular numbers on each, each um, rack. So it helps to train the uh, precision. With upper body strikes. Then these are the smaller sticks where I'm going to focus on the numbers. You see, I'm hitting the numbers on the same side with the sticks. So I'm working on precision, which helps me to do my more fine motor skills, transitions. Same thing with the knife, with the knife drills. I'm going, I'm hitting numbers. So I'm focusing on the numbers for precision. And that's why it's important to, you know, to, to go down from the larger to the smaller, to the smaller, to the smaller, then to a different, you know, it's just using different parts of our brain. You good? And then I'm doing this, the gentleman, is and then this one is just more to fine motor skills you see the numbers a little more up close that's what I'm striking on focusing on those numbers as I'm going so I'm using both my right and my left and incorporating my legs too. So it's body awareness, coordination, hand-eye coordination. I'm using um, just my body awareness, transitions, balance. I'm working on balance by incorporating a lot of different things. So, it just helped my upper body and my lower body work in unison. And that's where I train both upper and body, upper and lower body. So that they're functioning together, you know, independently but together and interchangeably. Okay, so that's the um, that's the end of the demonstrations now. I uh, talked to Carly earlier. This is kind of like a halfway point between the um, you know, in the uh, presentation. And I'm open to uh, continuing or answering questions or having discussion at this point. So however you guys would like to do it, I can end the um, share screen and start it at a later, you know, as we go along, if there's interest for me to go over those. The, the, the second part of the, uh, the uh, presentation is about uh, principles and strategies that I use like tenacity, persistence, uh, motivation, courage, et cetera. I just explain those, you know, a little more in depth, which, you know, 
it may be helpful if you'd like me to, we could do that. But uh, if not, we could just open up for discussion and then I'll just follow y'all's lead. So if you'd like to unmute, answer, uh, ask questions, make comments or anything, I'm more than willing to feel those or um, however, Carly, you want to go forth. From yep, that. they can either unmute or they can type in the chat. Sure, that'd be great. Either way. Um, Please. Questions. Don't be bashful, as they say. I'm being kind of a, uh, playful, you know. I hope I'm not offending anybody. Like that, like like that, um, that movie, Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Bueller, Bueller. Right, right. Anyone there, Bueller? Nobody's, <laughs> nobody's got any questions or chats. So, um, you know, I, I will say this, I'm really glad that you guys are here. And, you know, the, the, the issue is that um, we're all just very special. We all have unique talents and abilities. And I like that quote by, uh, by Albert Einstein, you know, regardless of your lot in life, you can build something beautiful on it. You know, so what I do is I really encourage you, you know, the professionals that are here, um, to encourage people to realize that they have genius. Maybe they don't realize what that genius is and maybe it's gonna take seven years like it took me seven years after I was told that I was unemployable and declared disabled. It just took me a long time and I had a lot of issues with the first computer that I got with the back pay. I had so many problems with that. I had to rebuild that computer, uh, two, two, two computers I had to rebuild with uh, AOL and with dealing with tier one, two, and three, and people not want to take responsibility, pointing out the uh, computer company, pointing out that it was AOL's fault, AOL's fault was the computer. So it just is a nightmare that I could have given up on, but I'm glad that I did, you know, in the process. So, you know, my, my encouragement, you know, to you all is just to let your people know too, like what Albert Einstein said, it's not that I'm so smart, it's just that I stay with problems longer. So, you know, don't, don't give up. So. So how did you come across martial arts or what, what led you to that as far as addressing oh, that, neuroplasticity? Yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a great question, Carly. Um, when I was younger, I got picked on and uh, my, my uh, parents got me enrolled in a judo class and uh, I stayed with that for a very short period of time. But then I just had, a, I had an interest in the martial arts, you know, and I, then I, I, um, I just, oh, I, st I, I didn't have any money because I had a lot of financial insecurity going on in my life and it was all devoted to getting my education, you know. But I had the opportunity to train at a, you know, with some um, some kung fu, and I had some an opportunity to train with different things along the way. And then I started training at this. Um, it was a twenty four hour fitness, and I saw some guys there that were training in Muay Thai, and also that were doing grappling. And I got talking with them, and just started to train and you know look at different martial art disciplines, which which one would work for me best. Uh, I'm a short, stocky guy. And uh, so it, it just helped me uh, work on the different issues that I did. And, and uh, then I was very fortunate to meet somebody I started working at, working at the Y and I met a friend, friend named Mike and he introduced me to my sensei. And I started training with my sensei in uh, 2000. So, um, and sensei was very kind to me. He didn't, I uh, didn't charge me to uh, take classes and uh, you know, they were very kind and I learned a lot along the way. And then I, I just developed my, I had, I was in a black belt cycle, which was a 10 month long cycle. I've, um, and I injured my, uh, I had meniscus tears in my right knee. And after, you know, looking at a lot of different, uh, I'd gone to two different orthopedists and getting opinions and so forth, I decided to, um, to drop out of the black belt program, uh, you know, uh, process, 
and I rehabbed it for eight or nine months and then I was able to get back and do it full tie knees and full tie kicks and then I just incorporate. I just had a real passion to incorporate incorporate the the collie the sticks and you know the different things it just and then it just it just is a serendipitous thing. I think the neuroplasticity, I was doing neuroplasticity stuff before there was such a concept of neuroplasticity, you know? And then, and then I got the, 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 came up with the word neuroplasticity, you know? Because our brain is plastic, you know? And then I just, it just, it was kind of like a, a you know, a, a, a hand in the glove, you know? It just is a good, good fit for me. And so, you know, uh, it, it helped to define what I was doing. So that's when I started to um, started to share. You know what I what I um, I shared. That's an ex did I, I have a tendency to be very um, detail oriented, and that can be a good thing and a not so good thing. So, but um, did that answer your question, Carly? It sure did. It sure did. So um, tell me one more thing. Tell me, um, did you notice symptoms get better? Like, did you have symptoms from your injury that you noticed were reduced from your doing martial arts and practice? You know, well, well, that, that, you know that that's a that's a super question. Um, I am. Hold on one second. I was just trying to, uh, I'll answer that question, but I, I just wanted to show you all this and then I'll stop share screen. I've written an article, okay, on neuroplasticity, small successes, learning and relearning skills sets. And then here, this would be an excellent article for um, people, um, you know, to read. And I, I just explain it. And then I go down here and I show all my demonstrations, you know, from 2013 forward. So it just shows the development that I've done. So in, in terms of your question, asking your question, uh, you know, it's kind of like if you plant, you know, when we are, um, it's just an illustration. You know how when, when I was a kid, what they did is they, you got these milk cartons and you planted a seed, you know, in the, in the dirt, put it on the shelf, you know, on the, uh, you know, so, and then you, waited for it to grow you couldn't really pick at it to see how if it was grown or not but eventually it you know they uh they grew and it became visible and to answer your question i think that it's kind of been like that for me you know it's been a progressive thing over time so yeah it's just been a, a progressive thing over time and um what what i what I can do is this is the initial um, this is what I thank you so much for coming to my keynote presentation today as I shared with you I've gone through life and have come up against a lot of different walls in my experience I found that life is filled of with pieces pieces of the puzzle that come together at the right time in the right order I started training at a martial arts school in 2000. At that time, my sensei and I spoke, and during one of our conversations, he said that what I do is I give you ingredients, and what you do is you learn to bake a cake with that, and that's what I've done through my martial arts training. It's been a slow and arduous process, but I'm glad that I've st stuck with it. During the course of the past 11 or 12 years, I have learn different skills, and I've learned how to combine different skills. Today, I want to just show you a few of those skills. I do this to encourage you to pursue your goals in the ways that work for you. It may be different than martial arts. It may be in some other capacity that is true to your heart. And I want to encourage you to pursue that as in terms of ingredients, pieces of the puzzle, and don't. We did get another question. Um, oh, okay, go, go ahead. The reason why I was sharing that with you was is to show the original, you know, to, to show you the progress that I made. That was the original. Go ahead, though. Thank okay. you. Okay. Um, are there different activities for those with certain TBIs that people find easier to participate in? 
Everyone is different, but are some injuries more adaptable to activities for improvement? That's a really good question. Um, I would think that, um, say in the martial arts, okay, uh, Tai Chi may be a good way to start if you were gonna do, and you wanted to do, because uh, Tai Chi is very, it's slow and it helps to work on balance and it helps, you know, the, the like with the ball that they, you know, and it just, you know, trying, you know, so it's an individual thing, you know, and to answer your question, it's hard to know, you know, it's just really important not to compare, you know, and, um, you know, when I was going through the, I was going through, um, when I was training at the martial arts school, you know, I was grappling, grappling is jujitsu or ground fighting. And I grappled these, all uh, these stronger, bigger people, you know, and I was getting frustrated because I was being manhandled by them. And I, um, uh, you know, I talked to my sensei and I said, sensei, how do I grapple these people? And he said to me, he said, what works for me may not work for you. You know, what works for you may not work for me. You're going to have to basically figure that out. So, you know, it's kind of like the, the process, you know, it would be nice to, be, you know, each person, because each person has a different passion or a different desire, you know, a different goal, maybe in life dreams, you know, but, you know, some, that's a real good question. I just thought of this, you know, for many years, I had a definition of hope. I thought hope was if I just hoped enough, it would happen. And when it did not happen, I became discouraged, you know, and I kind of gave up on hope. And then through my journey and process, I realized that hope really is a coach. It really is a coach because what I believe our circumstances are not meant to keep us down, but they're meant to build us up because they teach us lessons that we normally may not be able to learn. And those lessons give us experiences and collectively, you know, they point us in the direction of our destiny. I like the illustration of the tapestry. On one side of the tapestry, we have many different colored threads. They seem, they're all jumbled. They seem to make no sense. But on the other side of the tapestry, there's a beautiful picture being show, uh, created, you know, and that's why it's really important, I think, to, um, to realize that there's something be beautiful being created, even though we can't see it, maybe. Because we're, if we're looking at the one side with the multi jumbled threads, we get, get the, the scourge, you know, and want to give up. But if we realize and trust, you know, trust, trust God, you know, for me, I need to each day, I, I don't know what I'm going to do each day, to be honest. You know, it's been that for a long time. So what I do is I get up in the morning and I pray and I meditate and I ask God to guide and lead me and direct my steps and help me to be of service and, then I go about my day and I just feel, as I feel led, I do things. So, you know, it's really important for me to involve God in the process, a loving God, not a religious God, but a loving God. And ask him, you know, what I do is I, I invite him into my life and I, I pray for the knowledge of his will for me and the power to carry that out each day. And that's really, really so important. I mean, I couldn't have done what I've done without his help. I'm 100% sure of that. You know, so I'm just, you know, it's just one, one, one step at a time, you know, like, like they, that quote that I shared earlier about Harry David Thoreau, if we advance, if you advance confidently in the direction of your dreams and endeavor to live the life that you've imagined, you will meet with a success unexpected in common hours. So it's just, it's, it's, it's just encourages me to keep going. I like another quote by uh, Helen Keller. She says, uh, when one door of happiness closes, another door opens, but so often we look at the closed door that we do not see the one that's open for us. Again, when one door of happiness closes, another door opens, but so often we look at the, clo do the door that's closed that we do not see the one that's open. And another one of her quotes that encourages me is, is that I am one, but still I am one. I cannot do everything, but I will not let that, what I cannot do interfere with what I can do. And then a quote by uh, 
uh, Theodore Roosevelt. He says, do what you can with what you have where you are. So it's really important just to, you know, to um, try different things. To answer your question, try different things because what works for me may not work for the other individual. So there's no, you know, and the way that we learn too, you know, when I, that got me to think about, you know, I mean, again, as I shared earlier in the presentation, we all learn in different ways. You know, some visually, some kinesthetically, and some auditorially or combination. I learned a combination. So a lot of the stuff that I've learned how to do has been self-taught through watching YouTube videos and then following patterns. You know, I watch and then I do, I go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. So what's important um, is just not to give up on the process. Did, did that answer that question a little bit better? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, for sure. Um, I also will mention just from doing what I do, we hear a lot about yoga and there's brain injury friendly yoga out there. I don't know if you've ever done any, Craig, but love your brain is something we heavily promote at North Dakota Brain Injury Network. So that's um, a company that it's nationwide, but they have some free resources on their website. Not to take away from Craig's stuff, but yoga, no, no. yoga, yoga. To try too for people. Um, and I like Love Your Brain because yes, it's it's strictly made for people with brain injury. So there's no inversions. Your head is not going lower than your heart. And um, they also don't say things like left and right. They'll say, you know, they'll have two kind of things near the per near the yoga person, maybe a plant and a, a vase or something. And they'll say on my plant side, you know, and so it's left and right can be hard. So they, they do a lot of like modifying of yoga that's brain injury friendly. So um, that's something else I would look into. That, that's, all, that's awesome. It helps with stretching too. And it also helps with body awareness. I think yoga does, and it also just helps to um, get the blood pumping because you're you're moving your body, your different muscles are stretching. You're having to stretch, and you know, um, Pilates too. It might be oh, something yeah. that would be good too. Not that I'm a doctor, so you know, definitely consult with your doctor or doctors before you start anything because um, I don't want to you know, suggest something and then put you, you know, you get into jeopardy about that because that's not what it's about. So for me, martial arts, the martial arts that I do have, have worked for me. They may not work for you, but if, if, you, if you like the concepts of what I shared about in the presentation and in my demonstrations, you can go to Home Depot and get, the, get a dowel, you know, and have them cut it in half. You know, and, and you could start doing just whatever you do on one side, do on the other. Because when I first started doing what I did with the sticks, I had to start out, and what I was going to show in that presentation um, that I was sharing is that I just had to start out very, very, very slowly. I had to do large circles, small circles, and figure eights. Then I had to do other things, you know, and just I incorporated one skill at a time and then just, so my encouragement to you, just do one skill at a time and learn that a bazillion times like I had to, and then another skill, you know, and, and then celebrate those successes, you know? Yeah, thanks so much. That, that's a wonderful, wonderful question, uh, uh, thoughts. Uh, thank you, Sonia for your your thoughts great message of encouragement and a way of looking at our future not only those with tbi but all those who have with injuries or disability thank you for your presentation thank you so much for your kind words yeah this this stuff can benefit anybody you know um you know what i don't like about a diagnosis and a prognosis is that they tend to put us in a box you know, and I, I, I'm not a label, I'm not a stereotype, I'm not a stigmatization, and I don't live in a box, and I encourage people to get out of their boxes, you know, to be empowered in their body, soul, spirit, mind, and emotions, and that's what my six presentations are all about. So if you'd like me to come back on another webinar and do any of those other presentations, you know, I'd be happy to do that. I'm, as I said, I'm going to be at McGee Rehabilitation Hospital next Wednesday, and and with um with um 
the, the Cleveland Clinic in, uh, next, next in March. So, and I have a lot of the presentations that you're more than welcome to, to see. I'll put those, put that in the, um, just per your, if you're interested, I'll put the link, link to that in the chat. And then you can, you know, I'll put that. Okay, so here's the link I'm putting in the chat. So you guys, if you like to, you can see where I've, where I've spoken and where I'm going to speak. And, uh, you know, you can book me or schedule me. And, uh, you know, at the times that I'm not speaking, but I would love to come speak to y'all's um, group. I, again, uh, you know, it's just really important to realize that, uh, you know, we're all running our own race. We're all on our own journey. And um, the information that I share can benefit people with and without brain injuries. Um, especially as we get older, neuroplasticity is really important. Um, you know, I've, as an aside, I walk a lot and I've, uh, I, since June, I've lost 30 pounds. You know, and I've got leaner and quicker. And um, so I'm, I continue to want to polish, you know, and to, uh, to get better at what I'm doing. So what I do is I just encourage other people to keep going forward and get better at what they're doing. Um, you know what I do sometimes in my presentations? Because I believe that uh, brain injury uh, can be a very isolating experience. And, uh, you know, we can, we can uh, but by being able to share, we can come out of the shadows of isolation and break free from feelings of alienation. So what I do in my presentations, which I did, what I did uh, with the Council on Brain Injury, I spoke to them in uh, Paola, Pennsylvania on uh, Monday evening. Uh, I called on people because I then I give them, you know, give them the permission if they want to, they can share something. So if it's OK, I'm going to call on people. And again, don't let don't feel embarrassed. You don't have to say anything. If you like not to say anything, no problem. I'll go on to the next person. But just want to, you know, have everybody be included, involved, you know, because that's empowering. Right, Carly? It's empowering to be involved. So, hey, Berg, do you have anything to share or say, or how did the presentation help you, and or how did the presentation you think going to help you help other people that you work with? And that's a general question to everybody. Hi, Berg. Can you unmute? Can't hear you. You're muted. You're muted, Berg. Unmute, please. Wish I could, un there you, oh. Still muted. Down in the left-hand corner of your screen, uh, there's either, there's a line through the mute, unline it. Oh, there you go. There you go. Right. Can you hear me now? Yes, yeah. excellent. Okay, I was stuck. It wasn't working for me sometimes. I'm sorry. That. No, that's okay. You're awesome, by the way. I appreciated your um, your information very much. I um, I had I have been a rehab nurse for 27 years, and I have a sister with a brain injury. So um, I used to do a lot with the North Dakota Brain Injury um, Network, just doing more. But I'm in a different role now. But okay. I um, joined because I wanted to hear um, your presentation, and I think you're amazing. Um, your strategies and things you use are amazing and um, good for you. Good for you um, about um, everything that you've done and using your faith and and understanding your strategies and moving forward. I am so proud of you. I think this is an amazing story and you made my day. Um, I'm working in a world of COVID and it's so depressing. And then to hear you has just totally uplifted my heart. So good job and thank you. Well, thank you, Ms. Berg. I really appreciate it. It's so good to see you. You got a beautiful smile, by the way, just by means thank of encouragement. You. You're welcome. Hey, uh, if you know anybody out there on the trail that could benefit from my messages, you know, I would just, I invite you to invite them to invite me. Okay. To Sounds the party. Fun. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much, Berg. Awesome. How, how about you, Brenda? Just going from uh, next door. 
if you'd like to share something you can or question or answer to what I asked. If not, that's okay. How about you, Stephen? Would you like to share anything? Thanks again, uh, Bird, for what you said, Sure, appreciate it. Um, how about you, Pamela? Uh, Jessica, Lisa, hey Sandy, I got your, uh, thank you for your time and I appreciate the message. This is so universal and will be. So thank you so much for your comment there, Stephen. I really appreciate it. And uh, Sandy, Hey, Sandy. I'm, I'm here. Okay. Do you have any um, thoughts? Well, just that I'm so dug into the trenches that I don't know how to move ahead. I just failed at my tryst trip to Sam's Club. <laughs> and I just don't know how to motivate or operate in the world the way it is right now. And I don't know where you, how you figure all this out is kind of mind boggling. Yeah. I, I ended up leaving all my groceries there after I paid for them because I just had to come home. So I don't know. I, I couldn't get through the checkout on the door because I had scanned something twice and then I, she told me to go to the line where everybody, what is that line where they sit and they help you with things. And, right. and, and so the line was really, really long. Like it looked like it was probably an hour long. Hmm. So I just left my basket and came home. I left everything in there after I, after I had paid for it. But I just, I don't know how you start to, function you know i guess i should sit down and make a list of what i need to do so i don't scan something twice i don't know anyway i enjoyed your message it really it was really uplifting to hear how far you've come and um i don't know right now the trenches are the trenches are over my head <laughs> Yeah, Cindy, Cindy, let me share this with you. You're not the only one that scans things twice, you know. Oh. So, you know, I do things too, you know, but we don't have to do it perfectly. And that that's a good thing. There's a couple of other quotes that I like that I talk about in one of my presentations. The one is about um, Thomas Edison. Thomas Edison was the uh, inventor of the light bulb as well as other inventions. And, uh, you know, he had a newspaper reporter come to him and say, you, you, you failed so many times at trying to, you know, create, uh, invent the light bulb. And Thomas said, I'm not failed. I just found 10,000 ways that won't work. So it's just a matter of learning how to find about what works and what doesn't work for us, you know, and it's okay. And then uh, Babe Ruth. Babe Ruth was the home run king of the day, and he was also the strikeout king of the day. And he had a newspaper reporter also ask him, from what I understand. He said, Babe, you strike out so many times. He says, every strike brings me closer to a home run. So, yeah. you know, the point of it is it's important to just keep stepping up to the plate, you know, and not giving up. So, you know, you might call back over to Sam's and tell them, you know, and maybe somebody would be kind enough to deliver them for you. You know, just an idea, I, a thought, just a thought. It, it, it's a, it is a good idea, but I just don't think I can go oh. through that without totally falling apart. I'd rather just be out the money and, and say, don't go to Sam's anymore. You go up to your little Safeway store and that's too much for your mental right. stimulation Since over there. Yeah, sensory overload. That's a good strategy. You know, it just takes what it takes to for me, you know? Yeah. Find yeah. out what works. I'm sorry that happened for you today, though, Sandy. No, thank you. It's just one of many things in the world today. Yeah. 
And thank you for your thoughts. Really appreciate that. Thank you. You're a blessing you. to me. You're a blessing to me being here. Well, thank you. Thank, thank you for your thank you for your program. You're welcome. You're welcome. Ms. Kimberly, did you have anything that you'd like to share? Um, if I'm going too quick and you didn't unmute, um, feel free to unmute when you get back to you. How about you, Nikki, or Casey, or jo Johnny? Love to hear from you folks. If you feel comfortable. Yeah, and thanks for being here, Craig. I, I missed part of it because I was on another meeting, so I was just uh, wanting to sit in. No worries. Glad that you're here. Well, that you're thanks here. for joining us again. And you're welcome. You're a resource facilitator for the Brain Injury yeah. Network. Hey. Yeah, we've talked on the phone, I think, Craig. Yep. Yeah. Nikki, it's so good to see you. Yeah. Thanks for being here. Again, as I was sharing with uh, Carly, I have a, uh, I've, uh, five other presentations. I gave the uh, Finding Purpose uh, presentation here. Uh, last time, I believe. And then uh, uh, I have a cre uh, acceptance of creating hope after brain injury or creating our new normal after brain injury presentation. Then I have this neuroplasticity uh, presentation. Then I have a presentation I've created called Believing in Ourselves Through Self Advocacy, Owning Our Power. And then I have 12 ways to enhance our our, brain, our life, well-being, and relationships. And then my sixth presentation is making our lives magical after brain injury and stroke. So I'm more than welcome to come share those here you know, uh, with the webinar. Or if you know any of your, your uh, contacts out there in North Dakota or anywhere else around the uh, country, let them know that I'm available. I don't charge. My, my heart is to encourage people and to realize that they're not alone, you know, that like I said, the uh, brain injury can be such an, uh, an isolating experience. Mm -hmm. But the good thing is as, a, as we meet and share and realize that we're not alone, it helps us come out of the shadows of isolation and to break free from feelings of alienation. So please encourage your folks, you know, all my messages are no, are no cost, don't charge, don't anything. And I included, I don't know whether you were here when I put that in the link, but um, uh, I have a link to, you know, the presentations as I shared with Carly earlier. I've okay. done uh, 58 of them around the country so far, and I have 11 more or 10 more after today scheduled. Uh, so, uh, and you can see the dates where I'm scheduled and I'd be happy to come uh, share on any other date and time. So. Great, well, thank you thank so much for your time, Greg. You. We appreciate it, yeah. You're welcome. Do you want me to go through any of those things that I talked about at the end of the presentation since we have some time? That uh, is up to you, yeah. You do have technically a 15 more minutes if you'd like well, it. You uh, well, I, we could do that again, this is, not so I'm wanting to share with you my what I've done, but just so that you can reinforce it to your folks, you know. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah. So, so we'll go back over over to um, the sharing the share screen, and again, this is my website, just so that you can see, um, you can get to. But um, go back over here to my. Um, Sorry, I'm getting oriented again myself. Okay, and go on down here. And then, so as we go down here, I will do this so I can see some of you. Show video panel, there you are. So we, we went down here, we explained, again, you can go back to my website. Those people like uh, with you, Nikki, you can go back and go through this again, just to see what I talked about. Um, I elaborated more on what uh, is here, but anyway, so here's what I was I go over in the second part of the presentation, okay? In my experience, I needed to exercise diligence to succeed. I needed to plan, prepare, execute, and succeed. So that, you know, I, I needed to, you know, 
pay attention to Hope, who is my, uh, you know, my coach, who encouraged me not to give up. Um, so I needed to plan, prepare, execute, and succeed. There's a quote by Zig Ziller, he said that we are born to win, but to be a winner, we need to plan to win and prepare and do to, to, do to win. So, hey, Sandy, I saw that you, you uh, saw your phone. Did you want to say something before I uh, continue? Oh, no, I'm sorry. I was just playing with my buttons on my screen. Well, it was good to see you. I'm glad you did that. So, so these are um, these are different ways that I've used, and they're sort of definitions and then quotes that speak to me. So it's a commitment to succeed one day at a time, a willingness to give your time and energy to something that you believe in, or in a promise or firm decision to do something. And that's by Cambridge Dictionaries. And a commitment to me involves loyalty. Again, I'm reading this for sake of uh, recording so that people that are uh, listening to this, maybe they can't see it, they can listen to it. So commitment to me involves loyalty first to myself. Commitment encourages me to stick with a goal regardless. Although the way that I set on to accomplish something may change, my commitment teaches me that I can find a way that will work for me to be able to accomplish my goal. And here's that quote that I, I quoted, regardless of your lot in life, you can build something beautiful on it. And then to achieve what will improve the quality of our lives and well-being, hard work, something requiring lots of effort to do, either physical, mentally, or emotionally, labor, toil, by dictionary.com. Excuse me. And then hard work teaches me to be uh, uh Hard work to me means being diligent to accomplish a task or goal. Hard work, a work ethic can be likened to or running a marathon, not a sprint. And as we said that, you know, starting out slow, taking one body at a time and keep chewing. And the quote again is, if you advance confidently in the direction of your dreams and endeavor to live the life that you've imagined, you will meet with a success unexpected in common hours. And then another ingredient of a training camp, and I liken, I liken, uh, you know, this process that uh, being involved in recovery is like being in a training camp, such as a UFC training camp or in a, um, you know, a football training camp. So determination is another important. It's is a positive emotion that involves persevering towards a goal. A difficult goal in spite of obstacles. Okay, determination occurs prior to goal attainment and serves to motivate behavior that will help achieve one's goals. That's by Wikipedia. And determination helps me to focus on what I want to accomplish in spite of obstacles and setbacks. And then obstacles become a sign on the road that helps me to realize that adjustments need to be made to accomplish my desired goal. And like that quote that I mentioned, I've not failed. I've just found 10,000 ways that won't work. And then drive is another ingredient. There are three major components to motivation, activation, persistence, and intensity. Activation involves the decision to initiate a behavior. Persistence to me is in the continued effort toward a goal, even though obstacles may exist. Finally, intensity can be seen in the concentration and vigor that goes into, a pursu into pursuing a goal. And that's about education. Your motivation can either be internal or external. External motivation can only last until the threat is removed. Internal motivation is, is sustainable because the individual's internal desire to achieve. So if we're trying to drive somebody, you know, trying to lead a horse to water, but to get them to drink. If they're not willing to do that, they're not gonna do it. So, you know, uh, motivation and uh, you know, a desire to stick with stuff's gotta be an internal. So we can light a flame under people's lives, you know, in people's lives. I like a quote by, um, uh, several quotes, one by Mara Ingrid. She says, if you don't like something, change it. If you can't change it, change the way you think about it. 
you know so so the good thing about it is that we can uh we can uh, you know do we can just encourage people as we go along i forgot the other quote uh, train uh training to act in accordance with a rules drill activity exercise or regimen develops to improve skill the rigor to uh, transferring a uh, training effect of, uh, of experience adversity so for me discipline means that i keep working on my craft tweaking and taking away adding to and making what works work for me and here's a quote by uh, jim Rohn: discipline is the bridge between goals and accomplishment and then fortitude is another important ingredient in being able to achieve my what i've been able to achieve and what i continue to work towards fortitude means uh, meaning courage or bravery is the ability and willingness to confront fear, pain, danger, uncertainty, or intimidation. So what I, that, you know, getting back to the tortoise and the hare, even though that we may have people trying to discourage us, you know, from running our race, fortitude keep, keeps us in the game, keeps us going forward, regardless of whether other people have tried to discourage us or not. And for, for me, fortitude, means that I commit to pursuing my dreams and my destiny. That I stay focused on my vision and mission, that I remain true to myself. And a quote by um, Babe Ruth, every strike brings me closer to the next home run. And then the next uh, quality or ingredient is persistence. The quality that allows someone to continue doing something or trying to do something, even though it is difficult, or opposed by other people. For me, persistence is the decision to get up more times than I fall down. Persistence for me means that I don't give up regardless. Persistence means believing in myself. And here's a quote that I really like, believe in yourself, go after your dreams and don't let anyone put you in a box. And then the next, the next quality is tenacity. An unwillingness to yield or give up, being dogged, stubbornly, persevering, and steadfastness. And tenacity keeps me moving toward what I want to accomplish in my life. Tenacity means that I keep looking for ways to win in life. Tenacity means that I do not give up on myself and take no for an answer. Tenacity means that I trust the process, the loving God, and myself. Tenacity means that I keep moving forward, doing the footwork and letting go and trusting God with the outcomes. And here's that quote that I like. It's not that I'm so smart. It's just that I stay with problems longer. And here's the final ingredient, courage. The state or quality of mind or spirit that enables one to face danger, fear, or vicissitudes with a self-possession, confidence, and resolution, bravery. Courage to means that I stay committed to the process, the footwork, and the journey. Courage helps me to remember that I do not have to do things perfectly. And here's a quote that I really like. It says, my mother said that if you are a soldier, you will become a general. If you are a monk, you will become the Pope. Instead, I was a painter and became Picasso. So, but that's, that quote speaks to me is that you know, other people may be telling us we should do be something other than maybe that we're able to be or that we want to be, but go after your passions and your heart and work on one skill at a time and don't give up on the process. More will be revealed with time. The pieces of the puzzle will come together in the correct order and at the right time. So don't give up on the process and loving God or yourself. So any other thoughts after I shared what I shared, Berg or uh, Sandy or anyone else, Carly or Nikki? Love to hear from you if you're interested. If not, um, that's okay too. Well, um, before somebody says something, I just want to thank you again, Carly, for inviting me back and Nikki and I, anyone else that was involved in the process and wanting me to come back. And uh, again, I want to come back and do those other other presentations if you'd like me to do them. And 
again, I appreciate you sharing my availability with your peeps and the other people that are out there in the community. And, um, you know, really, uh, you know, it's all about encouragement and hope. You know, it's all about people not giving up, you know, and, and keep using because we're a gift. You know, I, when I first started writing my, um, my uh, second chance to live, I would include this at the end of my uh, presentations. You are a gift to your world. You know, the reality is that we're a gift to our world. There's a quote that I like by um, Mother Teresa. She said, don't wait for leaders. Do it one person at a time. So we don't have to be wait for leaders. There's also a quote by Scott Adams, who is an American cartoonist. He says that, um, uh, uh, out. Um, essentially, the quote says that uh, people, are, there, are, everybody in our lives are in, uh, influential. It says you don't have to be, uh, of, uh, you don't have to be uh, important to be of influence. He said that the most influential people in my life are the people that probably don't even know that they are influential in my life. That's essentially what the quote talks about. So don't worry about your significance, you know, or your, uh, you know, whether you have anything more than who you are. Just be who you are and trust, trust the process, a loving God and yourself. And as I said, not to be redundant, more will be revealed with time. Um, all right. Thank you so much. Yes, appreciate it. You're welcome. And thank you so much, Carly. It was really nice seeing you all again. Yeah, great to see you too. Being with you all. And, and if you, um, yeah. So feel free to reach, you know, anytime that you want me, you know, or, uh, you know, if you know people that want me, let, have them contact me through my website. Uh, you know, through the, they can, uh, yeah. Anyway. Okay. okay. Thank you okay. so much, Craig. Thank All right, we'll hope to hopefully we'll see you soon. Okay, thank that, you. That'd be great. See you later, Berg, Nikki, um, Stephen, Johnny.